Between lithium batteries, monstrous inverters, and complete battery management systems, it's easy to blow thousands of dollars on a remote power setup. But do you really need all that, or can you get by with a bit less? What's up guys? Today we're going to be dissecting what you actually need when it comes to an off-grid power setup. Now I'm not here to say which option is the best way to go because everyone's needs, wants and budget is going to be significantly different. This is more or less going to be a run through of what options there are available and the pros and cons of each according to me. And with that in mind, let's jump straight into it. So there's four main components that make up any off-grid power solution and we're going to run through them all one by one. Starting of course with the most important ingredient, the battery itself. While there are a lot of different brands, shapes, sizes, colours, etc. available, most of them fall into one of two categories, AGM or Lithium. AGM deep cycle batteries are definitely the cheaper option and they still do a great job of running your fridge, your lights, all your chargers and all that stuff. Capacity wise they start from around 100 amp hour like I've got in here and they go up to around 200 amp hour. Now there are some that fall outside that range but that's just a general guide. Now one thing to keep in mind with AGM batteries is that you can only discharge them 50% before you start damaging the battery and shortening its life. So a 100 amp hour battery effectively only works out to be 50 amp hour and so on. What size you need really comes down to what you're planning on running and how long you're planning on running it for. Now you can get really technical and work out the power draw of all your accessories, but who's got time to do that really? So here's my use case as an example. So I've got a 100 amp hour AGM battery and that happily runs my fridge, my lights and charges all my camera gear. It'll do that for one to two nights without charging, so pretty fine for weekend trips but if I'm staying somewhere for more than two nights, I'll just run the car for an hour or so during the day to pump some charge into the battery. However, if you're wanting to stay put for longer or run more accessories, then either look into a larger AGM battery or perhaps lithium is the right choice for you. Now there's no question that lithium is by far the superior choice when it comes to batteries, but it comes with a mighty, mighty price tag. We're talking about four times the price. If you can afford it though, lithium batteries weigh a lot less than AGM batteries, have a much longer lifespan, and you can use about 80% of that charge, compared to AGM's 50%. Now some of you might be ahead of me here, but seeing as lithium lasts about four times longer, you could argue that it's actually cheaper than AGM, because you're getting more usable charge for a similar lifetime cost. So if you can afford it, which I certainly can't, and you know you're going to be camping for the next 8 to 10 years, then by all means go lithium. You won't regret it. But if not, AGM is still a perfectly fine solution and will run all your fridges and accessories without any dramas. And if something does go wrong, they're nice and cheap to replace. Okay, next up is how we charge that second battery, and I'll try and keep this as simple as possible. Basically, if your car does not have a smart alternator, which is pretty much anything mid-2000s and older, then we've got two choices to charge that second battery. An isolator or a DC-DC charger like I've got up here. Isolators are very cheap and very simple. They basically just connect your batteries together when your car's running so they can both share the charge from your alternator. They get the job done and if you're looking for the cheapest solution to get out there and start camping, then they'll work just fine. However, they won't charge your deep cycle battery as effectively as a DC-DC charger will, and they might slightly reduce the life of your battery as well. That brings us on to DC-DC chargers, and as I mentioned earlier, if your vehicle has a smart alternator, or you're planning on running a lithium battery, then a DC-DC charger is the only option you've got. DC-DC chargers do a much better job of charging your deep cycle battery, they're going to extend the life of your battery, and most of the time they're solar ready, which means you can hook solar panels directly to your DC-DC charger and let it take care of everything. Speaking of solar panels, they're also a great way to charge your battery, especially in Australia, but I'd only ever rely on them as a supplementary method, as well as charging your battery through your vehicle. Next, let's talk about how we use that power because there's no point having it if we can't use it, right? Well, there's a lot of options for this. You can go for a ready-made power box and I'll link a few in the description down below. Or you can buy all the components separately and go full DIY. 
Basically, the ingredients you'll want will be some sort of fuse box, switches for your accessories, any power outlets you want, an inverter if you need 240 volt power, and of course, wiring to link it all together. Now, my personal power setup is extremely simple. I've just got this cheap eBay switch panel, which gives me two USB outlets, a cigarette lighter socket, enough switches to run my lights, and all my fuses are behind my false wall. The final piece of the puzzle is monitoring our power usage and battery level, so we don't wind up with a flat battery halfway through our trip. As with everything else, there's a bunch of different options, so there's something to suit every budget. At the very bottom end, a basic volt gauge will give you a pretty good idea of what level your AGM battery is at, with full being around 12.8 volts and 50% being 12.05 volts resting. Remembering that for AGM batteries, we shouldn't drain them below 50%. For most people, monitoring voltage is a perfectly fine way to check your battery level. That's how I monitor my battery level as well. Mine just works over Bluetooth so I can check it from my phone and it also gives me a timeline so I can see when my battery was drained. If you want more information such as real-time amp draw or you've got a lithium battery, then you'll need to go for a full battery monitor with a shunt. These are a lot more expensive and a lot more complicated to install, but they give you a bunch more data so you can really understand what's going on with your battery. And yeah, if you've got a lithium battery, then you'll need one of these because you can't use voltage to monitor the charge level of lithium. Hopefully that run through points you in the right direction for your setup, but if you're just getting into camping and battery management systems, DC-DC chargers, AGM batteries and all that is just blowing your mind, you can get all in one units. Click here for my full review of this unit or click here for something a bit different. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.